Um, all right. So where do you, you know what? Let's, let's, let's pivot here. Cause I, I do want to talk. We, we've, we've kind of tiptoed around it, right? The transfer portal, NIL, the new era of college basketball, free agency in college basketball. Um, it's, I like that there's player freedom. I like the the idea of player empowerment. I do think that there needs to be some sort of structure in place. I hate the term guardrails, right? Guardrails makes it, excuse me, makes it seem like you're kind of limiting these guys. And I don't want to limit these guys, but I want to be able to create a structure where it's not just an absolute free for all. There is no sport. There is no profession on any level that is as much as a free for, a free for all right now as the college basketball transfer portal and NIL era is. So T.O., I'll go to you first on this one. Man. If there's, is there a change that you can make? Is there a way to streamline this process? Is there something that you would put in place to provide a little bit more structure, uh, maybe create a little bit more incentive for guys to be able to come back to school? I, I just, I think that there's ways to make this so that it operates a little bit better than what we're currently doing. What, 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 what's necessarily wrong with what, what's going on? I I I don't like how well. So let me answer this. Let Get rid of the collectives. Get rid of the collectives. See, I I disagree. What I would do is allow the cre- the the collectives to be able to negotiate multi year contracts with players. Right. I think the but biggest that's issue not, that's not that's not name image and likeness. That's pay for play. Yeah, and I have no. I mean, we can call it what it is. Right. Like but, we're, we're but 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 scared. if you, I, I'm not I'm not against. Kids signing multi-year deals where they have to give some money back if they don't fulfill their deal. I'm not against that. I no, see, I don't even think it's 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 giving money back. I think what you do is you the problem right now is everything is basically like you can sign multi-year stuff, but everything is basically one year deals because there's no way to create like a an opt-out or a buyout, right? It's just that's not the way that these these contracts and these deals work. And that's why everyone is getting in the portal because they're basically operating on one year contracts. And if you're operating on a one year contract, and you have a great season. There is no reason why you shouldn't, and there's the, why you shouldn't just get in the portal and see what other options are out there. So instead of pretending like this is all just nil stuff and this these these collectives are uh, just paying players for their name, image, and likeness, and because of uh, the fact that they're brands and the blah blah blah, whatever. It's it's pay for play. We know what it is. It is what it is. I have no problem with it. Let's lean into it and let's allow these collectives instead of having to go straight through the school, allow the the collectives to be able to. Um, put together multi-year yep. deals where you have something like, okay, if the player wants to, uh, you signed a two-year deal, right? You're coming in a freshman, you signed a two-year deal. Uh, after your freshman year, you want to transfer out. You have two options. Um, you either sit out a year or you pay some of that money back as a buyout, the same way as any contract, right? Same way as any deal. Where the coaches, if they want to get that player out of the program and they want to run them off, which is probably what like 30 to 40% of these transfers in the portal right now are, uh, you know, they got to they gotta pay half of what's left on the, the second year of that deal, right? Create an incentive for guys to want to stay for multiple years because the as as good as this stuff is and as, as good as this is for content, and look, we're in, we're in the middle of April right now and we're doing weekly shows based off of stuff that's happening in the portal. Like, it's great for the, co- the people that cover the sport and content. It creates interest further into the year than we normally would have. Um, but the one knock on it is you you kind of lose that ability to identify with the players as a fan, right? And you want to be able – it's great having these guys come back. It's great having Hunter Dickinson. It's great having Armando Baycott. If Oscar Sheway returns, it's great having him back, right? But being able to have guys stay in one place where they're there for three or four years, where I'll just revert back to UConn because it's the easy one. Fans identify with Anamba Sanogo and Andre Jackson and Jordan Hawkins because they stayed there for multiple seasons and they won them a national title. Right, they brought the program back to prominence. Adamo Sonogo is going to go down as an all-time great UConn Husky. He just will. It just is what it is. He yeah. stuck with that program. He had opportunities to transfer out. He didn't take them, and now he won them a national title, Final Four MI- MOP. He's going to go up on the wall. He's going to be an all-time great UConn Husky forever. He'll never pay for a meal again in the state of Connecticut. Um, and I just think that when it's so easy to transfer after one year that – you lose that part of it. And I think that that part of it is important to the sport. So creating incentives where these kids can still get paid. I'm not saying don't let them get paid. I'm saying pay them, but create a structure where the incentive is to return to school instead of the way that it's set up where the incentive is to enter the portal and because everybody's on a one-year deal. Does that make sense? Well, yeah. it, it does make sense. And I think along those lines, 
Here's my take. High school recruiting's got to matter again. It gotta will. Again. Mm-hmm. It, it eventually but, will. I think the extra year, once that's once that garbage is done, you want to talk about a mishandling of that. Oof. Understood, but I, there's no question that right now you're asking, well, where's the second stop? Uh, rather than thinking about what the first stop is for a lot of these guys. Because the first stop is is – either the the stepping stool or in other cases it's the launching pad uh because mm-hmm. there's no there's no incentive to staying around uh for the most part for these guys whether they flourish and then are looking for right now you've got guys that are making the sweet 16 the lead eight that are transferring that are transferring if Ryan Nemhard comes back to Creighton we're talking about a team that that could win it all. And and look, there's more to the story there and and, and he's going to end up somewhere out west. But like that that to me is that great? Is that a great thing or if he come just like to your point, if he comes back and Shireman Baylor Shireman's coming back, does that create more of oh yeah, I identify with this team or or like yeah, I'm familiar with these guys. They they're running it back again. That anytime you run it back you have developed that following. People identify you with that team. They've they've come to identify Hunter Dickinson with with Michigan. Now, some names are bigger than their school. like, And, and that's where the portal's interesting because you know what happens? Rivalries are formed. If it's intra-conference, enemies are formed. And you get those types of social media comments like when Naheem Malin says he's going to St. John's, and Tristan Newton comments on his Instagram and says, now I can cook you like I said I would. You know, that that creates some fun buzz because they were teammates at UConn, and now, you know, people are thinking, oh, is Newton coming back? So you've got that, but I think... And real quick to add to that, it also creates national storylines, right? Caleb Love leaves North Carolina, it kind of takes him to the national title game, has a bad second year, leaves North Carolina, and now he's going to Michigan. And it's like, what will Caleb Love be? What is North Carolina? Like, you get big storylines. So it's it's not it's not like a bad thing from a content perspective, but just like I do think that being able – like it's – I think Ryan Nemhard's the perfect example, right? I understand why he's considering the schools that he's considering, but if there was an incentive that made it so that coming back was the better option – financially no matter what happened i just think that those are things that would uh that would make the sport better from a fan perspective while also making sure that these guys are getting their market value does that make sense yeah and and terrence you played so rob you played too but but terrence I, I wanna, <laughs> I i'm also two and oh against to and shooting contest remember that That's right. two, two and, and one. one two and one i'm sorry two, two and, and one, one. Two and one, and you're not, and you don't exactly play big boy ball. You just play the little kid games. No, that's not true. I got the video of us in the Moody Center. All right, you get one you shot, one up. shot. You getting lit up? Did you lose? It was a one shot situation. Did Bring you your shorts your... next time, Doster. You... I'm not taking no for an answer. Did you make your shot? Huh? Did you make your shot? I just got off a of six hours worth of plane. So yeah, did I. I. All I hear so is my my thing is blind squirrel. Blind squirrel. <laughs> My thing is, Terrence, is that what I what what I think is key with this trying to keep somebody around for two or three years. Look, you're not trying to pull hair. Like we're not trying to say, let's lock in a kid and make him stay at a school for two or three years. Come on. No, that's not what we're doing. But like for me, Terrence, I think these coaches are constantly battling to the nth degree. All right. I, I did get this top 50 freshman. Oh, my donors, my boosters, my people around me are like, yeah, you want to run a great program? You got to bring in the four or five star kid. You've got to bring in that kid. Well, yeah, I do. But college is a transition for everybody. Right. And so I think these coaches have never battled more before of, all right, what do I promise this kid? What do I promise this kid? Because I know I can get the fourth. Or f- if I'm good enough to get a top 50 kid, then I'm good enough to get the, the fourth or fifth year kid that's helped winning. I can get him to my program too. How do you balance all of that and keep the freshman understanding 
of the bigger picture in this current climate? You don't. Yeah, that's, that's well, I, I've talked to several assistant coaches or a couple of head coaches text me when I was in the when, when I was on vacation and they were just like, I'm not not going to comment on the portal. We're just recruiting kids so we can get them on the comeback. <laughs> like, wow. like we're just recruiting wow. kids so we can get them after they leave these high majors that they're probably not good enough for. Crazy. And, yeah. and, and therein lies, uh, Rob, you know what comes to mind then for me? And and I know I'm, I'm segueing, half segueing, so you could, you could take the car and back it back up. But like, <laughs> this is why, this is why I'm really fascinated because Terrence, the question I just asked you about the freshmen coming back as sophomores, that's why Duke could 